Hello everybody and welcome back to another basing video. Now you've seen me use crushed glass snow before, but I don't think I've really been able to do a video with, guess what, the new glass snow effect from Replicant Nature, otherwise Armored Wolf. All we need are these two things. With these two things, we're going to be able to do stuff well like this. Snow effects, right? And look at those fabulous little icicles. Going to do the icicles too because, oh, look at this. With those 3D printed bits, branches. So instead of just trying to find little sticks and everything, well, we can print these out to whatever size we need. And that that's just been amazing. Really amazing. These, of course, are the Song of Ice and Fire uh, beer riders for the free folk. Now we've got another unit here. And we've got these are Night's Watch right here. So a very similar thing. We will be using some of the Armored Wolf Crushed, uh, sorry, while well, the Crushed Glass Snow, also a couple of Grass Tufts. And there's some nice little wintry ones that I think are going to work really well with this. And now those, we're going to try those as well. Now I just want to really quickly talk about this. Simple as could possibly be all of these bases and the movement tray was just a heavy cork, the bulletin board cork stuck on these branches and then a little bit of the Luke's APS. Oh, I also did use my own, the homemade texture paste from one of the very recent basing videos. So that stuff works. It's nice and solid here. You'll see that I didn't do a whole lot of painting with this. I tried to get some different shades of brown, reddish brown, some yellowish brown, even a little bit of bluish gray. Most of it's going to be covered by the snow. So I did not invest a lot of time and painting these hard lesson learned. I just, yeah, <laughs> believe me, hard lesson learned. So what we're gonna do next is we are gonna try and get some snow on these, on these bears over here. Again, a simple mix of the gloss gel right here and the replica nature crushed glass. So we're gonna get to that next. Let's get to those grass tufts. And again, these from Replica Nature. Uh, I'm gonna, either one of these two could work really well. I'm going to go with these. So, tempted, uh, no, I'm going to go with these guys. Got my little pokey tool right here. Again, there's uh, also two. I've got some brushes. You want to make sure these are as clean as possible because if they're not, that can be a bit unfortunate because the crushed glass, well, at least the heavy gloss foam, or the water effects that you use, which you can get from Woodland Scenics, that uh, that stuff's going to transfer whatever kind of pink color you might have sitting around in that brush. Boy, these, this glue really does hold very well. The As I've said before, the thing I really like about these tufts is that they can go over an uneven surface. Got a really giant one over here. Nope, no good spot there, but there might just be a spot here so you can see we, we stick it down now we're going to take those edges press those down don't know how many times i've had some uneven surface like this literally just surf on top of it and the surfing grass tufts yeah they're sounds like fun but uh, not as much fun as you might think yeah they're they're less cool less useful i'm not going to go berserk with these things don't need a ton of them. Uh, just do snow there. Here I might, uh, th for the heck of it, throw another one. See how long some of that grass is? That is another thing that really distinguishes these from other tufts. And of course, these same, very same tufts, I've used them on my desert theme stuff. Yeah, so multi-purpose. Multi-purpose is always good. Grab this guy and... Oh, what the heck? We'll just throw that over there. Maybe a small one blink over there. And I think all four of them have their tufts. How's about we get down to some... This right here. Now, again, you could use the Woodland Scenics. I think it's called real, either Realistic Water or Steel Water Effects or something like that. I like this because I have a little more options with it. Now, the 
replicant eat your stuff. It actually comes with a really cool little spoon th th with it now. Uh, I don't have that. It just got well, basically lost at Adepticon. Now, I want to just show you this here. So it's just this butter container. What's handy about this is I essentially have almost like a water. It's like a pallet. It's literally like a miniature tiny pallet. I've been so tempted to turn these into actually miniature wet pallets. You have a little water reservoir here. You put me a little tiny sponge, a little pallet, whatever. And then, I mean, stick at the top, right? Onto the container, you got yourself a tiny, very portable wet pallet. In this case, we're, we're not quite doing that. I do have somewhere some water. And I guess I am going to put a little bit of that into my reservoir, as they say. With these, you could wear gloves and a mask. Guess what? Everybody's got gloves and masks. They're everywhere. So if it, I can't do that to film, but you can do that to, to work with this stuff, right? Not a problem. What we want to do is separate this into two piles. That's pretty important here because, all right, let's just uh, not overdo it here. Because if you spill this stuff, I mean, it just gets all over the place. Now, that tiny jar, tiny jar, you would be amazed at how many bases. I, I, I've done multiple Song of Ice and Fire armies with just that, just that much. All right, let's get some of this out here. So it really does not take very much. Now, of course, the thicker this is, the thicker your snow is going to be. That is, uh, in one way, the advantage of this, say, versus... Oh, actually, I'm going to put that over here when I start working on it. So the advantage of this versus the still water is that, well, you can see if I just mix the snow right into this, right, we're going to have uh, some very thick, heavy snow. And while it's not going to be necessary for these guys, there's another army painting series that's coming up where I wanted to see if I can use this and basically make it where the the snow is sort of flying up behind the miniature like uh, the running wolf right behind his uh, his back legs now th it takes uh, maybe a little while to thin this down right uh, i think i could just let me do that to speed up that process here so this takes a little bit longer than, you know, obviously the still water, you just would use the still water and enough said, it's done. This is a point right here where if I had paint on the brush that wasn't cleaned out, well, it would show up now. It would most definitely show up. A little more this way. So it's starting to smooth down a little bit. Of course, too, you could get the maybe not so heavy gloss gel. There's well, there's a million different times, that, uh, different types of those gloss gels. The reason I'm using this here is because it's the same stuff we're going to use to create the icicles. So instead of a third material, we buy two. Also, this is what I use to sculpt flames. It's what I use to sculpt water effects. It's what I've even used to sculpt fur on these guys because there's a big old gap right here. I just use this stuff, not thin down quite as much as that. And I actually, that's going to also be in a new army painting series that's coming up because they have the same kind of gaps that these guys did. All right, it's time now to enter the crushed glass snow. So something to keep in mind, the more of this and the less of the crushed glass, the more melted your snow will be. You'll see as we add more of this, this starts to thicken up. So you want the fresh fallen snow look, you want to have a bunch of that crushed glass in your mix. I would advise not creating too much at any one time. That's why we're just grabbing a little bit here and a little bit there. And you see how that, that starts to change in consistency a little bit? See, it's a bit more like a, that whipped butter consistency now. You know, I might just throw it all in there. Because I really, I would like that that puffy snow look. Again, the more of the crushed glass, the more. And you can do multiple layers, too. With that little spoon, you could even do something like this. And then in areas 
where you might want the crushed glass to be even more prominent or the the fresh fallen snow you could actually pour a little bit of it just a bit of it onto the already existing snow obviously before it cures uh, it can take a maybe a half an hour depending on how well deep the snow is that might impact just how long it's going to take to cure now make sure you can see that and what are we doing here we're trying to get a little bit of snow onto our tufts and i might even dry out the brush a little bit more so you can see we're just sort of dragging this over the top don't want to do too much let's do this one so again just dragging that over the top a little bit here and there uh, last one. No more tufts. Okay. It can be a bit of an art form. It's sort of a learned thing uh, as far as applying this. But you can see. I mean, we can do little, small. We can do really big piles. You can do either either way. It It's just whatever you wanted. Now, I will put a link in the description. You know, the Twitch session where these guys were painted. And in that Twitch session, you will hear me mention many, many times that as I was painting the polar bears, I had to keep in mind, guess what? That there was going to be all this uh, all this white stuff. All of this snow was going to be here. So the polar bear, I had to sort of, for lack of a better term, put up with it looking really, really light. But now as the snow works its way in, it's not going to be quite so light anymore. So look at this. Now the advantage is that that might even look a little bit like semi-melted snow there. You, you just cannot do this with the other types of snow. I've tried. I've tried every way to manipulate those. There's even been a few that I thought were promising that might actually work. They never did was never ever able to manipulate those to make them look though like as any kind of melted snow it's only worked with the crushed glass and the only place you can get this is from armored wolf because secret weapon doesn't exist anymore if you look at all my old videos well guess what they're all done with the secret weapon snow now here i'm actually going to grab a, a smaller brush See if I can't sneak that in here. Let me just uh, try to free up this brush a little bit, soften that. Okay, I think that's softened up now. It's just a junk brush. You, you really don't want to be using your good brushes for this. Uh, you can clean the glass out of there with, uh, well, basically water at the start and then some uh, rubbing alcohol. Now, look what we're doing here. We're starting to pile that up on the uh, branch here. Not a ton, of course. But if I want to have icicles hanging off of these things, um, kind of need snow, don't I? So there's my snow on the branches. I'll do more if I f feel the need. But for right now, what I'm going to do, let me get this stuff out of the way now i hit the the palette over there you know what i might just do this so you can actually see what i'm doing here that's why i had the palette cam going so you could see when i'm actually taking some of that out of here i probably have to mix up another batch for the last two so you can see a big old chunk of it here Press that in. Now, again, the I could, if I had that little spoon thing, or I mean, whatever, you could actually pour some more of the crushed glass on top of this. And let's say this all dries, and maybe I don't want as much translucency as I ended up with. That's no big deal because all I need to do is just put another layer over the top of it. That that was one of the really fun things that I discovered about the crushed glass 
is that I can layer it. I can have, I can put uh, mud effects in it. So let's say I take a little bit of, oh, wrong brush, this brush. Let's say I was to take a little weathering powder or something like that. I could put that into the snow with maybe a little bit extra, either the heavy gloss gel or the water effects. And now guess what? I've got myself muddy snow. I've done that. You can actually see that in some of the previous videos. Uh, I would check out the basing techniques playlist. I might even try and throw some links in the description for some of those. So here again is another area where I didn't bother to paint the base. Why? Because I wanted to do this to reveal that one small rock there. I'm going to throw a little more right there, and then we'll press this down. So I said, what was the point of painting all of this area around this rock? What was the point of doing that if all I'm going to do is cover it just like this? Now it gets really fun because we got ourselves a nice, uh, nice tree right here to throw our snow into. Ah, look at this. This is just so much fun. Now, I, now I'm not going to do blood effects on this. I have other videos that show that. And I, I even went so far as to do a test video where I tried a couple of different snow effects and then tried to do blood effects on them. And everything was hideous except for the crushed glass snow. For the obvious reason that the crushed glass snow, well, it had... It was made of crystals. When the blood effect went on the snow, those crystals, it actually seeped into the crystals like blood would. Everything else looked, as you might imagine, like red paint on top of a bunch of white stuff because that's all it was. So it wasn't really snow effects. So just, again, something to ponder, something to keep in mind. I'm actually going to throw a little bit more of the snow and i want to actually have this almost piled up to the edge of this so this is this is look at this see i'm able to make a nice big old pile of snow here i can push that and practically have it hanging over the edge just something you can't do with the other types now i really can't emphasize that enough see here i can throw that on top of that Snow. Now here, maybe not so much with the snow, because there's that overhang. So we might not do a, quite as much snow there. Now with the snow that I've got left here, I'm just going to hit these the trees on this base, and then we'll try and mix up some more quickly here. I realized that it, uh, it will be a little bit repetitive, but I try to kind of talk through some of the rationale behind this. You can see I'm actually extending out the tree branch there with the snow effect. And I'm, I'm putting a little bit more over here on that part of the branch. Okay, and I've got one more big old branch right here. I just want to use what I've got on this branch here kind of focusing on the areas where that snow would probably collect, which is here in uh, the various forks of the tree, certainly here on the end. You could even mix up just a, smesh, uh, smesh, a special batch of snow that's got a little bit more melted for just the ends of the trees where you want those icicles hanging off. So again, we're just going to build this up. Uh, not, we don't want to kind of defy gravity too much there. But the goal is create as many areas as I can for wonderful things like icicles, that fun stuff. Now I'm going to just take this brush, gather up what I can. And just going to chuck it in a place I know I'm going to need it, like right here. 
And you can see how that snow, I can push that right in all of the gaps there where I need it. And then I just sort of sculpt it, right? I'm flattening it out. See, I'm just kind of hitting that. Now, the more, if you use the the more liquid type stuff, the stuff from Woodland Scenics, you're going to get, uh, it'll be easier to get the kind of flat approach, but it also is going to want to expand. You want, you want to watch that. Believe me, because all of a sudden, next thing you know, it's just it's gone, it's just expanded. In fact, this one here, you can see it's kind of a, it's come close to expanding off over the edge. So, uh, and you can see we got the melted snow, and then the icicles hanging off of it. That is, that's what we want to see. That's what we're looking to do. All right, we have a couple of bases to do. I'm just gonna chuck some of this out here and. You know, there's a little left over. I need it for the movement tray, don't I? So out comes some more heavy gloss. And maybe I won't use as much of it. And then we'll, we'll see what uh, kind of a mix we get, right? See what happens with that. So I'm just going to go boom direct with that. So this should be even more of a fresh fallen kind of a white snow here because there's even less of what is tantamount to the water effects. Oh, even my Armada ships, the water effects I did on those, that sculpted water around the hulls of the ship, that is all this very same material. I've got videos on sculpting flames on the uh, YouTube channel, also on the, well, the Patreon page, Twitch, everywhere. It's just, it's an amazingly handy thing. It just, uh, we call it almost elementium because it uh, does everything. It does water. I've done thatched roofs with it. I've actually done for my Rohan buildings, I have actually used it to be thatched roofs. If there is one material that does any more stuff than just this, I don't know what it is. I like utility. And it does it well. It's not like, um, that, well, it just doesn't do, maybe it's okay here. I've used it for rivers on terrain. And it does them very well. It's, it's super durable. It doesn't yellow. And unlike resin pores, well, you can see I've got pretty much full control over this, don't I? All right, I'm just going to mix the two of these together. Now you can see how that's a bit more crumbly, right? That is a little more crumbly than the last mix. Why? Because we have more of the crushed glass, less of the other material. So this right here is not going to be in the least bit translucent when it comes to the snow. All right, I'm just going to try and squeeze some of this out of the brush. It's a little bit easier to handle sometimes. Once the brush gets like this, it, it can get a little bit tough to handle. So again, if you're, if you want to be super safety conscious, that's, there's no problem in being super safety conscious. I would just uh, say, grab the, the mask or the gloves. You can see there's been no aerosolization of the glass particles. They're pretty darn heavy. And I've kept it in this little thing right here, which I'm just going to throw away as soon as I'm done. So this gets thrown in the garbage, all safe, no problems. Now, what I need to do here is actually, I'm just going to grab my other brush here and almost try and turn that into a bit of a filbert here. So it's almost like a sculpting brush. And then I'm going to push this into the areas where I need it. So I can use one to apply and the other to do the sculpting, I guess. Kind of push that into the recesses here. And now I'm going to see if I can't get a big old batch 
on the uh, main rock here. A little more snow down there. Possibly one little pile over here. So when I do the the base, I'm just gonna have a batch all mixed up because you've seen this twice. I think I think you understand this process now. And it, it's gonna require experimentation by you anyway, which is just as well. Last one here. I'm just gonna chuck a whole bunch of snow down in there again. You can really see why I did not bother painting so much of this stuff because it's just going to be covered. Push this along here. Here's some more right here. All around this this tall rock really does need it. And I've had this stuff on bases for a long, long time, years, and it, it's fine years later. So as long as your brush is clean, and that, that's the big caveat, right? You got to use that clean brush. If it is clean, you should be okay. What I was thinking about here again is having a little bit of that snow sort of pile up there and then hanging over the top. So... I'm going to just shove a little snow in there, I think, after just to use the last little tiny bits. But you get the idea, don't you? You get the idea about that. Next thing we got to do is this one. So I'm going to mix up another batch of snow, and we're going to try and hit this. Then we can move on to our icicles. We need to do a similar thing with our base, or our movement tray here. Same kind of application. And you can see, look at this, see how I can, that almost, now it's got like this little bit of sort of semi-translucent snow there. So it basically sort of fills in that area. That's more realistic, tiny little bits of snow in there instead of just what you usually see, especially on these movement trays when it comes to Song of Ice and Fire stuff, you see huge gobs of snow surrounded by absolutely nothing. But look at this, see that? And I could, like I said, if I wanted to make it even a little bit more puffy or whatever, I could throw some more of that fresh fall on top. Look at this. I can really do some amazing stuff here. Look at that. Or I can go a lot heavier with it too. Here, I'm going to move this around. And we'll just... Uh, Throw a little bit more in here. So that edge has more snow. Again, I didn't bother painting all of this because I figured it was mostly the vast majority of it going to be covered with this snow. It will take you some getting used to moving this stuff around. One thing I have noticed, the more I use the heavy gloss gel as sort of the medium instead of the, say, the still water, the Woodland Scenic stuff, this is easier to apply and control with the, because it has natural adhesion with the gloss gel. The other stuff, it doesn't naturally adhere to anything. So you have to actually play around with it more. So I think this is another reason why I kind of like the, this combo because it's just a lot easier to get it stuck in by orders of magnitude. So what I'm trying to do here is focus on the areas where maybe the snow is a little bit lighter here and then I'll do it. If I want to do any big piles I will do those later. That'll kind of be one of my last applications I think probably after I do the the little bit of snow on the trees. Now what we'll have to do is give this a, at least a few minutes just to start setting up. doesn't have to be completely hardened to be able to do the icicles. 
And there will have to be, I think, one last little segment filmed uh, after the icicles have dried so that we can just kind of look at them and talk about them. I always call those a final thoughts type of a segment. Those are on a lot of, especially the uh, Patreon videos, because we're trying to cover concepts as much as just, okay, here's a how-to. Sometimes we want to talk about the why or analyze what happened afterwards. Now, I don't want to use up all the uh, snow before I... So I want to try and get the snow everywhere before we use it all up. When you're doing these movement trays like this, and you have things like I do that extend out over the edge... You've got to really be aware of that as you're constructing the ba uh, the bases and the movement tray. I have a bunch of videos about that, and uh, I, I make them. I'll be making more as I start doing more uh, Song of Ice and Fire related army painting series. I also have uh, some. Sigmar army painting series that have snow in those as well. So here, you know, this can pretty much just be almost entirely snow. You know what I, I want to do before I forget? I'm just going to throw out a few little grass tufts here. I wasn't sure if I wanted to out on the outer edge here, but what the heck, might as well. It's going to take a few seconds just to throw a couple of them out there. I thought maybe not on the, the movement tray itself, but why not? I think I can throw one more. Maybe over there. You can see how these things just stick really well with that glue. Okay, that's good enough. It's more than enough of the grass tufts. And then as I fade this out... Oh, look, it's pretty much ready to go to put our little treatment over the top of the grass tufts. So it just looks like the snow is actually falling onto the grass tufts, too. And it, uh, it is a good idea to not necessarily uh, bury the grass tufts in the snow. Uh, just kind of observe that it doesn't the grass doesn't necessarily get completely covered by the snow kind of works its way the grass almost prevents a little bit of the snow from falling or reaching the ground now I can start to think about some bigger areas of snow on some of these because I've, I've done the main stuff so I kind of know all right I can uh, maybe indulge and put a little more snow here or there. Because I should have more than enough for the trees themselves. They don't require very much. Okay, and you can see that, that little bit of almost like a dry brush of the snow there. It's going to leave this nice little just impression of snow down in some of the crevices, but much more delicate than what you typically see. And again, it, I mean, it gets the job done, but what I usually see when I'm looking at Song of Ice and Fire in particular is I'll see these movement trays with these what looks like just areas of spilled spackle or something and just it doesn't really look like snow it just uh there's little patches of things this not so much in the way of patches and remember i could have this be muddy it's so much easier to make the uh the you know the blood effects on the snow you know what? i think i could use a little bit more on that rock up there so you can see again it's just a little more universal coverage but the rocks stick through and now you can really see well i just did not bother painting over all that stuff why would i bother doing that now here see i've, I've got a little bit of water in this uh, part of it was i kind of was hoping to have what's 
tantamount to some wet snow here or some melted snow. See that? Look at that. That is some melted snow right there. Now, obviously, we want some heavier snow here on the tree itself. So this, when you're working with just the woodland scenics, what is that, the still water, it does not, it's nowhere near as easy as, to apply as this. So I'm thinking, especially since this does multiple things, even other things that you might do with the still water, I mean, why not start with that, right? Just, just go with this from the beginning. It's just, a, I think it's going to be a better idea for you. Gosh, this is just so easy, and it really does uh, look fantastic. And these 3D printed uh, branches, these are from, I think he's on Cult of Print, or 3D Cults or something. I think it's 3D Cults. Uh, this is uh, Make It Epic Basing. I have I I've purchased a few of their files. I I'm going to get a bunch more. I'll, and I mean a lot more trees because I want to do some uh, videos on how to take advantage of their stuff for actually trees. Uh, just really amazing basing bits that they do. Just incredible. And there's there's some sci-fi stuff too, I believe. Okay, now I'm going to just, this is where I start to fill in. See, there's that melted snow here. Ah, look what's happening there. And I can also go back to the other bases very, very briefly. Like right here, I see an open area. What am I going to do? I'm going to take that. See how it's watered down? Look at this. Watch what's going to happen here. Look at that. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that would have been very kind of patchy. It would have looked like sort of artificial, just like what I was uh, talking about, right? And now it just see how it's seeped in all little crevices and cracks there. So And also, too, this just seemed like it, uh, well, I didn't like the way the toes were. So I'm just going to have it covering the toes because it didn't want, I uh, didn't really like how those looked. Now, again, we're going to do a little bit of the uh, melted snow here, and now maybe a little bit more of the heavier snow. I see this branch never did quite get its snow. Uh, you can Again, you can put multiple layers. Look at this. Uh, I say, you know what, maybe I'm going to put more snow on that tree. So more snow on that little branch there. So again, make it epic basing. Uh, printed them out on the Sonic Mini 4K. I'm really looking forward to getting the trees. Uh, for Well, for terrain, dioramas, lots of different purposes. So see, look at this. Uh, see, it kind of continues the snow a little bit, but not to the full degree like what we had here, where it's the big old piles. This is an. Oh, let me move this out of the way. This is another one right here that I just looked at and said, "Hmm, there's uh there's some gaps that I don't really like." But we can do multiple layers, and all I'm doing this is just a little bit of water here. It's a little water. It thins this down. What I could even do is, see where I, I did that? I could almost use that a bit like glue. Then I could go back. I could take my crushed glass and just pour some crushed glass over that surface again. The other thing that this does right here is that it, it holds this in place. This branch, it wasn't going anywhere before. But now it's definitely not going anywhere with a whole batch of this crushed glass sitting on top of it. When this stuff dries, for all intents and purposes, you got glass again. So it's going to be very, very strong. Uh, something to consider. 
me uh, fill out the rest of this. You know, that actually needs a little more snow on the end of that branch there, I think. Come on, a little more. Because we want icicles, right? If I want to have the icicles, got to have that snow. Okay, one, one more here, again, where I, I saw some some areas that I thought, you know what, I need to get some more snow down. And I've got the snow right over here, so just going to chuck that down into there. Complete that. I just uh, was kind of a, also wanted to cover up the, the toes on that bear. Just wasn't liking the way, it's not that they were sculpted badly, it's just sometimes those don't cast very well because of the way these figures are. But boy, you can really see now why I didn't bother painting all of this. Okay, that pretty much takes care of all the snow stuff. So the next thing we've got to do, right, is we've got to get our icicles hanging off of these tree branches. We're going to do that next. Let's see if we can do a little bit here with some icicles. So see that look has almost kind of an icicle shape already. I'm gonna try and sit that on the end there. And sometimes you need to almost set up a little bit of a glue for them first. That's what I did on that second branch there. Now it can be a little tricksy trying to get these things to stay in place. And sometimes I'll actually use a little bit of water here can even do something like this. You could take your fingers and pull on those just a little bit. Now, some of this, see if you can really see here. See if I can get this one little piece off of here. I think maybe here is where we're going to try and do that. So, first, see if I can't in effect, glue that on there, and then see if I can. Quite literally, it's 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 like you're just yanking on it. Again, there's a couple of different ways of trying that. This is the same heavy gloss gel that literally the exact same stuff that we just were using to mix with all that snow. And there's another potential icicle there. Let's see if we can get this position there. Get maybe a little bit of water. Just a smidge of water. And like I said, there's a couple of ways of thinking about it. You could take your fingers and just yank away on that ore. It just uh, pulls right off of there. So we'll try and see if we can stick that back on. I like to do that with the brush. Uh, the problem was I just had nowhere to put my hand. There was because uh, the, the snow was uh, too close to it there. Get that connected to the branch and then just start to pull that down. And you can see gravity is kind of doing its thing a little bit there too. I'm going to leave that one alone, and then I'm going to see if I can't maybe uh, do a get another one started here. Because uh, sometimes it's best to kind of get one going. Oh, I have a potential icicle there. Again, I have to get it attached. Now here, I've got way more room to use my fingers. The other one just wasn't enough room. Do that again. I just needed to reposition that. I was a little too close to the, or not close enough to the end of the branch there. And it, it, it takes a little bit of uh, 
coaxing. But now, got ourselves Icicle. There's a little bit of a point on the end of it. Let's do a little bit more here. Maybe on the end of this, this one other branch, right? You can kind of go bonkers with the icicles, I guess, if you really want to. There we go. So another quick icicle right there. Uh, sometimes, too, I'll use the water so that it doesn't stick too much to the brush. So we got a couple of good ones on that. Now, one thing I did do is I threw a little bit of the snow effect in here. There's just a tiny bit left that I just was going to either throw away. And uh, sometimes it's fun to <clears throat> take a little bit of it and put it in areas like here where there's no heat being generated by either the, you know, the figure that's standing in the snow or whatever. So that's not a bad idea. Uh, sometimes I like to put multiple icicles on a branch. See if we can do that on this one. First, got to get it attached. Looks like it's pretty well attached. And then it's just a matter of kind of a tugging at that a little bit. I'll just grab another one here. Like I said, it can be a, a little bit uh, tricksy sometimes. I've put these on the ends of gun barrels, on vehicles, which is really fun. So there's a couple of quick icicles there. That's about we do this again. On this branch, where's a good spot? Maybe here. Build this up, get it attached. The more firmly that's attached, the easier it is to uh, pull on that and, and create more of a shape. So I'm just going to try and smoosh that on there. There, that's now I feel like it's it's connected a little bit better. Now I can start to turn that into more of an icicle here. Now you got to keep in mind that this, it dries extremely clear. Also two icicles, see how it's not a perfect it's got almost like little bulbous shapes here. That's kind of how icicles form. It's it's water droplets. Oh, and they're not always straight down either. Uh, I found that out. If these things form and it's at all windy, they can take some really weird shapes. I've seen some very, very strange looking icicles. See how it gets a longer and longer. Didn't look like it was going to be this quite this uh, way when I was first doing this one, did it? Let me see if I can do another one on the end of a branch that's facing up this way. Maybe not as big as that first one. There we go. Now that, that's another important thing, too, is, is to vary the size of the icicles. So see the smaller one, nice pointy shape there. If I can here, I'm going to see if I can uh, drop one right on the end of this branch. So sometimes you get lucky and you're able to almost form the icicle on your, well, palette, so to speak. Other times, not so much. Get that connected. Get 
second. Gotta make sure it's actually connected to that branch. Otherwise, it's just not gonna work. I've tried using plastic icicles that you can buy. It's just not natural at all. I suppose if you maybe started out with something like this to set them into, it might work. But I would suggest you check out some of the other terrain and diorama videos that I've got, even just on the YouTube channel here, that have the water effects. So we're going to leave that one alone. I'm going to come back around. Remember, this is the first one that we did here. Because that's set there a little bit longer. And I think now I can maybe uh, mess around with a little bit more. The other thing that I've noticed that you can do sometimes is really water this stuff down. And then you can, yeah, that tends to really be watered down. And you almost, it's almost like you're actually adding the water to it a little drop at a time. So it depends just on, again, what size icicles that you're looking for. See that one? Well, it's not dry or anything like that because it's not see-through. But you can see how I'm almost able to add a little bit to the end of that. There we go. So now we've extended that icicle a little bit more than it was. So what you can do is, again, just let the stuff set for a bit. Doesn't even have to dry completely. Just let it set for a little bit. Got another icicle here. Let me see if I can get this one on here. Nice big old icicle right there. Okay, we're going to let that uh, set, not mess with that anymore. These guys, don't think I need to play with those. These guys, we'll do a little bit here. But I think you get the idea. This pretty much shows you what is possible here. And I've done the same process on the movement tray. It's a little bit difficult to get to them. Definitely uh, not quite uh, as easy access as the, the bases. I want to see if I can maybe get an icicle on there for you. Like here. There we go. It's almost, ah, uh, look at that, a double icicle right there. Double icicle, how's that? That's that's pretty sweet. Let's see if I can, nope. I was just gonna put one here, but there's no snow on that branch. So uh, yeah, it doesn't make much sense to have an icicle there. Uh, maybe this will be the last one I try and fool around with here. Can get that maybe situated on that branch and then take some of that away. So we'll do a little bit of a final thoughts here, just a quick thing so you can see what these guys look like once they're once they're dry and what the snow I mean the snow is basically all set. Look at how nice and bright that is. Nice bright snow. Very happy snow. So we have icicles on our branches, on the base, and on the movement tray. And that's all good. There. One more icicle. There you go. Sorry, that went to, wandered a little bit south of the camera. So that one is really set. I did that one a while ago just as a test. And I'm going to see if I can maybe add to it. I, it's even starting to turn a little bit clear. So that's how much it's set. 
uh, depending on how thick these things are or how large they are, that's how long it's going to take them to set. It could be a half hour. It could be a whole lot longer. So see, I was able to add to that one. Make that even longer. Look at that right there. So we'll just let these guys set. Let these guys set. And then we'll just kind of see what it all looks like. Actually, I also want to get the figures magnetized as well. So we'll be right back with some final thoughts. So you can see we've got our icicles right here. Hanging off there, they're nice and clear, see-through, just like we would think. And we've got all the nice uh, sparkly stuff going on with their snow here. I mean, you can look at that. You see all those crystals there? And you can also see it's kind of semi-translucent. All of the other snow effects, you can't see through them like that. That is really just a huge deal. Again, here's uh, another one of our icicles there. The best thing is that these are very rough and tumble. They don't just break off. I mean, you can see here they're kind of a little bit flexible. I can move it. It's not going to break off there. And again, our snow effects. Look at that. You can see it's just a little bit trans. You can see a little bit through some of the edges where we made it. Uh, oh, here, let's look at our movement tray. So, especially right here, you can see it kind of, again, semi-translucent. There's just almost like a little dusting of it right there. That's where we added some of the water and really thinned it down. And our grass looks like there's a little bit of snow sitting on top of it. And uh, we also have our icicles over here too. So icicles worked out just fine. The snow worked out just fine. I'm going to see if I can't maybe take a couple of these off of their stands here. So also going to have to magnetize these guys. I'm just going to put the second one here. And let me see. I think, yep, this is... Uh, this one goes on the other side of it. Or I'll double check. I always write the numbers under here. Uh huh. Okay. So there's a first one. There's a second one. And you can see that meshes together very well. And like I said, we're going to uh, we're going to get our magnets on there. So that's going to really lock these guys into place. So yeah, not like little patches, but it just looks more like there's actually snow here. So that worked out really, really well. Again, it is the that is the replica nature right here, your crushed glass snow effect and the heavy gloss gel. I'll put those links in the description like I was like I was telling you about with the the the, the other episodes, the Twitch episodes where I painted these. Some of the other uh, painting episodes of Song of Ice and Fire. But there is a Song of Ice and Fire playlist, so you can just look there and uh, you're going to run into a lot of stuff. All like this right here. Speaking of free folk, there's a uh, frost giant. So you can see it, uh, nice consistent effect. And this was done years ago, as in four years ago, three, four years ago, something like that. At least three and a half years ago. So if you could maybe do me a favor, this is where we say thank you so much for watching. And if you, you know, could do the like and subscribe, the, the bell, all that kind of stuff, that would be really helpful for the channel here. You can also check me out on Twitch, just Wapelius on Twitch. That's where we painted these, and we will be painting many, many more of these. Also, too, got the Patreon page with lots and lots of painting tutorials there. Uh, basically about a thousand uh, almost 1100 hours worth now possibly even more than that so here let's uh, pop this one on here real quick as we just say thanks again and I'll catch you oh look at that on the next video